Hey everybody, I just wanted to make a quick video today because I just got a new shipment from uh, Robo3D to hopefully fix my printer yet again. I have an R2 and through my own overuse and trying to make it print 24-7, I think I've done a good job of finding all the little tweaks, issues, and things that might have been missed by Robo in the initial build of the R2. Well, going through that, one of the things I definitely ran into as a problem was that of the build plate and how with the hotbed there's an issue where the pogo connector uh, can get itself worn out and in doing so lose connection to the hotbed and when that happens most of the slicing software and things that control the robo will run into errors especially with the new firmware that's trying to help keep everything safe and working properly and it'll basically it'll fault on an error and not let you actually print so I've got the new board in, I'm going to show you as I unbox it, and we'll see what it takes to get it installed. A common error with the Robo, and it's great, it's one of these things where the technology and the thought process behind it made a ton of sense, was to make things easy for a user once you've printed to get into your print and get it off by letting it cool down, then pull out the bed, and then with the print on the bed, being able to just slide it off. The challenge in doing this though, is that the board has connections on the bottom, for it to connect to be able to provide heat to the bed itself to heat it up as well as to return the temperature for the software to know how hot the bed is. Well it's nice, they have these connections here so you can easily just set it down and up. The challenge is what they use is what's called a pogo board and the pogo board has these connections that you connect into, you can see my one back on the back of the board, that are springy so that when you set the bed down on it maintains a good connection. The problem is, and you can see it in this one up front, and the back ones here is that with heat and springs, with metal like this, they don't go together well. And so over time, the springs just basically fail and then your connection fails. When that connection fails, your print bed no longer connects properly to the robo. It returns an error and it, will not, it, it won't print. Um, it'll come up with a hotbed error. With some software, you might be able to slice it in such a way that you can print cold bedded. But the whole point of having a hotbed is to be able to get better adhesion and be able to print with multitude of different types of filament. Well, Robo has listened to customer concerns, as in this case, I, I've already, I, the board I put in here to replace, it's only been in there about a month, a month and a half, and it failed. And so they have released a replacement for the entire hotbed structure that does not use the Pogo design. And I just got mine in the mail today, and I'm ready to open it up. All right, so just got in the mail today. It was sitting in my box as I got home. It says from Robo3D, and they had, admittedly they did me great service and talked to them of doing a rush shipping on this. As I said, I am waiting to do prints for people that I've been commissioned to do, and it sucks being down. Apologize the mess. I didn't get everything cleaned up before doing this. I've been very busy with everything. So this is literally an unboxing of the new board design. I have no idea what this looks like. I don't know how to install it anything like that. So we're just going to go into it and kind of check out what is new and how they're finishing out and helping with these new prints. Now I was told it's not just the board, it's also got a new build tack design, so a new surface on the board as well. So as I pull it aside, let you see, already you should be able to see that it's not a shiny surface. So this is a new build tack and it's actually kind of got, I felt it on other 3D printers where it's got a somewhat smooth feeling to it, but texture. Uh, so it's not the hard glass that was on the other board. And then underneath it, if you look, ah, uh, look at that. It looks like they completely got rid of the pogo board design and they now have it so you can clip directly in to the uh, wiring behind. Now what this tells me is this replacement should actually be really fast, or at least I hope it will be. And so I'm gonna compare the two next to each other. So pulling off the old board, and you can see next to each other, and in fact, I believe the new board is going to be slightly bigger because of the way the build plate is. No, nope, it actually looks like it matches up oh, pretty much the same. So it's the same size board. What they've done differently is where the glass on the original, move this box out of the way, the glass on the original only kind of comes up to the edge and it has the whole end of where you can place. That's now dominated by where the screws are for the new build tech that's on there. You now have a Robo logo right on the front of that. It actually looks really clean. And as you can tell, 
even though it's glass and it's pretty sharp surface, using the scraper to get prints off, I've definitely left my mark. So, but on the opposite side, if you look at it, essentially it's the same design again, much nicer logo on there, so hopefully this is a design that'll keep as they put it on there. Uh, but otherwise, they're almost identical except for the connections. So if we focus right there on the connections, you can still see that we have what looks like the same resistor or such, or part of it there. Not sure if that's for... I want to say the thermistor is in the middle there, what measures the, the heat, so that must be to regulate how the um, temperature, or how the how the hotbed's heating, make sure it's an even signal. But you can see they got rid of where the connections are here and actually went with a directly connected uh, part on the back. So I should be able to just take off the pogo board in the back here and plug in directly to this, and we'll see if the R2 recognizes it. All right, so honestly, what, this install took maybe... Three or four minutes. Yeah, four or five minutes max, and that was mostly me having to readjust the bed on the springs to make sure it all is solid and, easy and evenly connected. So it says, bed is disconnected, reconnect. We'll see if it actually connects it now that I put the new connector in there. Because it doesn't have a pogo board, it connects directly, it looks like. And so if... It actually catches the connection here. We'll try to heat it up and see if it likes it. So successful. So now temp controls. And we're just gonna go to the bed. That's all we really care about right now. And let's see if we can bring it up to the normal 60 degree that I normally do PLA at. So that's set. We should see, it says print bed's hot. Yes, this is why we don't touch it when it's hot. There's the temperatures. It looks like it's at 33. It looks like it's going up, so let's go ahead and focus in. Make sure that it looks like it's working. So it looks like the print bed is going up on its own. And yes, I'm going to do the bad thing, and I'm going to reach in there and touch it here in a second to make sure it's working. And then we'll see if I can get back to printing. If so, I will give Robo a lot of credit for giving me a fix that took all about five minutes to exchange out parts. And so... So yeah, I'm feeling heat on the bed. It's, I mean, at this point, 60 degrees C isn't really that warm. But I am starting to feel it warm up, and so I'm going to do my first print off this one. And we will see how it works with the new bed, and especially this new build tack. So once it's done with the next print, I'll probably do a quick video shot to show what it's like to take off that next print. So, all right, time to do a test print. I need to get back to printing, so awesome. All right, so my test print just finished up with the new print bed. Um, it has definitely had time to cool. And so I'm going to do two things. Curious to see... You know, the scraper provided. Oh, this one's got a little dent to it. Uh, okay, it's not going to hurt anything. But, see how easy it is to bring this up. I may actually need to cut off before this. Now, with the new bed, it's attached, but the cord in there, since I took it off the uh, port that was in it, or the little cable tie that was tied down, I should be able to, I can move it out somewhat. The funny thing, the adhesion on this looks like it's really good, so I may not need to do as much of a brim around these in the future. Looks like Yeah, I'll have to play with that. It looks like I may be able to just adhese them directly to the board. So I'll see how those come off, and then I'll uh, do another video. I'm going to spend some time beating on this to see how hard it is to take it off.
As you can see, the new board is installed and I'm printing successfully. Plugging it in and getting it settled and adjusted with the springs on the main Z board or the, what holds the hotbed so that it all sat flush. Uh, initially, it was going, there was a little bit of rocking back and forth um, edge to edge on the board until I got the springs adjusted and got it all level. But after that, uh, getting it plugged in, everything's running great. One thing to note, this is a new type of surface for the board you're printing on, where the original was a glass surface, and one that, when you saw earlier, I had scratched up in the process of using. This new one is using a Biltac surface, which is allowing it for better adhesion, uh, and it doesn't, but at the same time, it requires a little bit of difference in how you get things off. One thing to note is that between the two boards and the adjustment, I had to redo my Z home, uh, where before I was running an offset of a negative 4.8, uh, which brought the build, uh, the print head very close to the print surface. After playing with this one a little bit, I had to adjust it down to a 5.2 currently, which seems to be a good distance. So it's a little further away. That's important because with that build tech surface, my first, um, the measurement that goes across on each print was digging into the build tech board because it was so close, uh, as well as some of the initial prints. And so, unfortunately, I have already damaged the new print surface. Now I say this, it's not the bed itself, it's just the build tech part of it, which having the screws around the edge of it looks like it's ready to be removed and you can replace that surface because they do wear out over time especially when you don't know how to handle it as I don't. Uh, I do recommend that if you get this new board that you do some research on BuildTac. There is a spatula out there that has gotten a lot of reviews from the company that everybody says is amazing that thankfully the local candy store micro center I have here has in stock and I will have to go pick up. The regular spatula that I had been using or scraper to get prints off is a little aggressive or harsh for the Biltex surface and was scoring and scratching it and in one case I actually dug into the surface and basically already need to replace it. Uh, so hopefully Robo will hurry up now that they're doing the new board and allow for their 9 inch by 9 inch Biltex surface to be available for purchase so you can get new ones. Uh, currently I've only seen out in general either 8 by ten and a half inch sheets or eight by eight sheets, none that will directly fit the surface of the Robo R2. Alright, so I wanted to talk about the build plate and specifically what I did that you shouldn't do. So now that this print's all cooled down, you can see the direct connection wire in and how I just because I disconnected it, it actually works pretty easy just to undo it and then be able to get to your build plate. This new build tech surface compared to the old glass. Now, one of the things to note with this, and you can see, especially in the bottom here, uh, build tech with a good scraper, you should just be able to get under your print and then have it come right off. Um, one of the challenges I had is because, as I had said earlier, the plate was, uh, my z-axis home was too low. Because of that, it actually dug a groove into the build tack plate right here. And so I can feel a physical groove there that connects in. And so with that, I'll never be able to get quite all that out, and I'm looking forward to when I can go ahead and take the screws, undo, and put a new build tack plate down once Robo offers the 9 inch by 9 inch. But here, if you see, unlike the glass where I would just bang on it to get under, really what you want to do with the build tack is just kind of work a scraper, and I do suggest getting the build tack scraper. Essentially, just work it until you get an edge under. And once you get an edge under that tack, under the uh, model, you should be able to just slowly push and get it to release. I'll try my best not to bang like this at any of the models because this is how you'll do things like gouge here 
But once you do get under one, you'll see how long it takes me to do so. Usually with my scraper, I can use a corner. There. Once it starts going under, you just kind of work it. And it'll come right off. Nice and clean. And so, you shouldn't have to really bang under, but you do have to get at least a piece released. But once you do, you just work the scraper back and forth and you'll be able to release it. Again, this is something where the BuildTech scraper is really designed for this purpose and supposedly it works amazing, all the reviews I've read. And so, I'm looking forward to getting one. Should make this a lot easier process. There, see? As soon as you get it under, it slides out really nice. Do not bang on because you can start seeing damage. I'll show it next after I get all these off. The damage I did to the board when I first got it by not knowing what I was doing. All right, now that I've finished getting it off, I want you to see the damage, unfortunately, that I've done to the board. Here I see where I've scraped off basically the build tack surface completely in several spots. And that was me just not really understanding this material. Um, unfortunately, when they gave me the replacement, as much as it's awesome that they gave me the replacement board real quick, no instructions with it, so nothing for me to really know what to look for and how to deal with it, how to work with build tack. So the key there is you do not want to bang into the board. You really want to just kind of ease under with a section of the scraper, just kind of slightly getting under, and then as flat as you can to get under and ease it off and they'll pop right off. Uh, if you do scrape, you risk banging in, ripping, gouging the build tack surface, and even to the point where right here, I've essentially dug into the board underneath it. I've still been able to print, but that is going to be a concern that until Robo has these available for me, and I'm going to have to try to treat this surface as nice as I can. Alright, thank you very much for watching my unboxing and installation video of my new print bed. Now that they've gotten rid of the pogo connector, and they've gone with a direct connection to the bed, it looks like everything's running great. I've already been doing several prints on the Robo R2, and it's come off wonderful. Please, I hope if nothing else, this video has taught you a little bit or shown you what to expect as you get upgrades to your Robo R2 as well as hopefully a heads up to please learn what it is to have a build tech surface to print on before you go in there and destroy it like I did. Uh, don't be like me, be better than me. But hopefully that uh, gave you some information. If you have any problems with your R2, make sure to contact Robo Support Line. They've been very good to me. Uh, and so, good on and keep printing.